want you to take a look behind me, Joe, because these are the F-35 uh, Joint Strike Fighter Jets. They are on the Lockheed Martin assembly line. They are all in various stages of production. All three variants of this stealth aircraft are, man, you are put together here on this same exact line. So the F-35 is the most expensive weapons program in history, and it is at a major inflection point right now. And I say that not just because of President Trump's recent criticism and subsequent unprecedented involvement in contract negotiations. Lockheed's turning out four F-35s per month right now, but that's going to jump to 14 over the next five years. Now factor in a falling learning curve, the use of automation, that's how Lockheed can still make money as the price of this plane continues to come down. We want an $80 million jet. So we have to take labor out of the, out of the, the aircraft build process and we have to make that process more efficient without any reduction in quality and by eliminating waste. So we do that from very technological advances like this robot, which can do the work faster. Now, for example, using robots to apply the paint that helps make this plane stealth, that's a process that shaves off two days of work. Now, all of this has enabled prices to come down, with the most recent contract coming in for the F-35A at $94.6 million. That is a more than 7% drop all in from the previous deal. It's a 62% drop since the first one was negotiated about a decade ago. Now, the Pentagon is looking to bring that number down as low to as low as $80 million by 2020. That is an incredible number, especially when you consider that the Cold War era F-16, which the F-35 is replacing, still sells for about the same sum. And I should note, is not stealth. And I should also just note that this plane in the recent uh, red flag drill that was done by the Air Force had a 20 to 1 kill ratio, which has really never been seen before. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting to consider an $80 million price tag for that. Guys? I guess, uh, Morgan, that somehow you get used to those G-forces. Because I, I did it once at NASA. They put me in one of those yes. things. That, and, you know, uh, it, they say don't do for more than 30 seconds or a minute. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go for... So I deliberately went over a minute, and I'm telling you, I, I paid the price for like two hours afterwards. It, it was, I mean, they, they, you get shook up like a milkshake almost. And, and it, <laughs> it's very easy to get nauseous and, and stay nauseous for a while. It's not a good feeling. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, I'm, I'm having a visual of that <laughs> yeah. in, in my head right now. I, I, will, I will tell you what was really interesting doing the simulator here is the fact that this plane, it's extremely high tech. We had, a, we had a test pilot tell us yesterday it's like flying a supercomputer. It's all touch screen and they have something like only 20 levers and buttons that are involved in actually flying this plane. It's pretty incredible. So the whole idea there is that is that, that tech is able to uh, allow the pilot to more specifically focus on, on his mission. Um, and they say really just about anybody can fly this plane, at least in a simulator. But yeah, I, the, the whole getting used to that G-force is, to me, another thing. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.